Hi, thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Anton Klimovsky. I'm a lecturer in probability theory at the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany. In this video, I'd like to report about a series of works with my collaborators on mean field disordered systems with complex valued energies. But before doing that, I'd like to thank the organizers of this very unique symposium and the chairman of this section for this opportunity. Let me now share my screen with you. Please bear with me for the next few minutes. Let me start with one of the simplest models of critical phenomena in disordered systems, namely with the brain image model. This model we have capital N configurations, to each of which we assign an independent identical distributed random variable with Gaussian distribution mean zero and variance little n, where little n is the effective size of the system, which is the logarithm of capital N. This leads in a standard way to the random partition function, which is a function of the inverse temperature parameter beta here. Or this uh, rather simple model of disordered systems leads to a phase transition, namely for beta between zero and square root of two, the log large numbers is valid, meaning that we can substitute the partition function out of the log by its expectation. And this leads exactly to this expression here. Whereas for beta, greater than square root of two, the law of large numbers breaks down because the main contribution to the random partition function comes from the maximal summand. And we can apply extreme value theorem to the to Gaussian random variables, which leads to this expression here. For future reference, let me record the following alternative way of generating this field of independent random energies, namely at time zero, we can start capital N independent random walkers with increment distribution given by standard Gaussians. Uh, and after little n steps, those will end up in positions which are in distribution exactly like here. The motivation to consider complex valued inverse temperatures or complex valued random energies is manifold. So one motivation comes from the Li and Yang theory of phase transitions, where at a phase transition point, like square root of two from the previous slide, the analyticity of uh, log partition function breaks down, and this can only happen because zeros of the partition function accumulate and touch the real line at the point of phase transition, because that's the only way the logarithm can develop singularity there. Another motivation comes from interference phenomena, or specifically from quantum physics, and uh, last but not least, from the relationship between local maxima of Riemann zeta function on the critical line and a local maximum of characteristic polynomials of the circular unitary ensemble, which was put forward by Fyodor Keating and is receiving currently a lot of attention in the mathematical literature. Let me now report about our results on the complex random energy model. So in the complex random energy model, instead of the independent Gaussian energies, we have independent complex Gaussian random energies. And in addition, our inverse temperature has also two components. In addition, we allow for correlations between the real and imaginary part of the energy. Our result is that the log limiting log partition function exists in probability and in LQ, and moreover, we have this explicit formula for the limiting log partition function. In contrast to the uh, real valued case, we have an additional phase here. So the two phases are the low large number phase inside of this I-shaped B1 area and the extreme value regime, this B2 area are quite similar where the main contributions come respectively from the expected partition function or the summons with the maximal real part of the energy. Whereas this new regime B3 is the regime where the central limit theorem is valid, which is in fact valid in the whole vertical strip from minus square root of 2 over 2 to square root of square root 2 over 2. But in this gray zone B3, the standard deviation turns out to be larger than the expectation. And so the main contribution to the log partition function comes from the standard deviation. Let me briefly report about our results on the generalized random energy model at complex temperatures. So this is a model with strongly correlated random energies, which are constructed as follows. At time zero, we start n sub one independent random walkers with the variance of the increment a sub one, we let them run for n units of time at which each of them splits into n sub two independent random walkers with a possibly different variance of their increments. We let them run for the same amount of time and which we end up with 
n sub 1 times n sub 2 coordinates of the particles which are now not independent because they can possibly share the same leg of their journey. Our assumption on n1 and n2 is that uh, they should grow exponentially in the size of the system little n. Our result is the following. So if we define sigma k like this and assume that sigma k are increasing, then so those phases in the complex plane correspond to various combinations of hybrid contributions of the first leg of the journey through its expectation, variance, or maximal term, and uh, the corresponding combinations of the second leg of the journey. All in all, this leads to a much richer phase diagram comparing to the phase diagram of the random energy model. Oh, let me finally briefly report on our results for the complex branching Brownian motion energy model. So this model is slightly different from the previous models because it is based on a random number of energies or particles, and also it's in continuous time. So branching Brownian motion starts at the origin at time zero with just one particle, and the particle performs Brownian motion, and it's also equipped with an exponential rate one clock. Whenever the clock rings, the particle splits into two particles in the simplest situation, or more general Galton-Watson branching mechanisms are possible. The particles then perform also independent Brownian motions, and are also equipped with independent exponential rate one clocks. Whenever the clock of a particle rings, it splits, and so on and so forth. So at time t, we end up with a random number of particles at random positions. It is well known that the expected number of particles is e to the power t, so it's exponential in t, which is in line with our previous convention of the exponential number of uh, energies in our system. Interestingly, even though this is a strongly correlated field, the log partition function, and this is our result, is the same as in the case of the complex random energy model, so in, as in the case of the completely independent energies. However, the fluctuations are very different, and it is via fluctuations that we derive the phase diagram. To summarize, for complex random energy model, generalized random energy model, and branching Brownian motion, we obtained limit theorems for the partition function. As a consequence of those, we obtained explicit formulae for the log partition functions. In turn, as a consequence of those, we identified full phase diagrams. And finally, I haven't had time to talk about the distributions of zeros of the partition functions, but these can be derived from the above results. Finally, it would be interesting to derive similar results for models with full replica symmetry breaking, models with microscopic interactions, and possibly establish links with quantum disordered systems. Finally, let me acknowledge my co-authors, Lisa Hartung and Zahar Kabluchka. So let me stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll be happy to take questions and hopefully talk to you later. Bye.